Whereas for everything else, I tried to stay pretty neutral just to make it easier to mix and match everything. And top number three, I break this rule. <laughs> Since I'll be going to Japan within the next couple of weeks, I'll be gone for about a month after that. I might as well bring you guys with me into this whole process. We get two checked bags and then one carry-on and personal item each. But the problem is we're flying into Haneda Airport. And if you know, Tokyo has two airports, Haneda and Narita for the first time. And then we want to visit Sapporo. We're going to be flying out of Narita, even though we landed Haneda, we're flying out of Narita to go to Sapporo, which is why we can't pack a bunch of stuff to bring with us on the plane like we would normally do for flying Delta, which we only have 15 pounds or seven kilograms to contend with. And then my boyfriend is coming with. He's paying for extra weight in his carry-on. These are our carry-ons here. Mine's the pink and his is the gray. Kind of cute. We're matching. So he paid, I think, an extra 2,000 yen. His is going to be 14 kilograms is his limit, which is about 30 pounds. Ish. And we don't have a luggage scale, so we're just using our bathroom scale standing on it getting our weight and then standing on it with our luggage and then subtracting it to make sure it's in the limits but he's not a big planner so he hasn't even packed yet thought it would be interesting to talk about my thoughts for capsule wardrobe planning i'm keeping the clothing to a minimum i don't want to overpack like i feel like i did that with florida when i went to disney world and maybe talk about my tips for how to pick a capsule wardrobe when you're going on vacation and still look nice and i'll be showing you guys the piece Pieces that I chose and my thoughts and reasoning behind it and I've narrowed it down to only 10 pieces for my vacation wardrobe clothing and that's it and we're gonna be gone almost a month we're definitely gonna be doing laundry I think 10 pieces is a decent amount with laundry I feel like if you're going on vacation for more than two weeks you should be doing laundry because it's not going to be economical for space and weight so I have a list here on my phone I'll throw it up on the screen as I go I'm going Going to be packing into our carry-ons here. The rest is just going to go in our check bags. We're taking transit to Narita from Haneda and then we're going to be shipping our bags to our hotel in Tokyo while we stay three nights in Sapporo. So this is my check baggage, this large black one, which I actually stole from him. This black one and then there's also there's another one that's nested inside flying from the u.s i think you can only have like a quart size bag of stuff that's liquids and gels and aerosols and each individual item can't weigh more than 3.4 ounces you know it's the three one one rule and i have it sorted into a category of what i'm going to be carrying on the daily around i have nice bags but i'm kind of concerned about bringing them overseas especially since i'm going to be reapplying sunscreen i'm just gonna bring my mini backpack plus I have worries that if I'm carrying something heavy on my shoulder all day it's going to hurt one shoulder more than the other and backpacks are way more ergonomic for a long period of time because they spread the weight evenly and the next category I have is beauty then hair then toiletries then clothes aka my capsule wardrobe pieces electronics and then miscellaneous items Florida I had a really nice bag that got destroyed so I'm kind of not wanting to take the risk again because of what sunscreen can do to buy a leather bag so my mini backpack it is even though it looks very cute and compact it actually fits a whole water bottle in there or any kind of like 16 to 20 ounce water bottle so it gets the seal of approval for me bought a wireless power bank specifically for this purpose sunscreen applicator this one is actually a refillable one that i actually use a syringe we got off of amazon as well as this is actually from amazon as well and this twists so that you can take the cap off and then this also twists to unlock the flow or lock the flow so that there's no drippage. I bought this refillable one because I was sick of having to overpay for like stick roll-on sunscreens just for the convenience because this is cheaper to just use lotion and fill it with this and also I was sick of getting sunscreen on my hands from using the lotion so I hate the greasy feel. I wanted to get this so that my hands when I reapply sunscreen throughout the day doesn't get messy because taking care of your skin is important. And also I heard that Japanese and Asian sunscreen is like more watery and matte feeling than like American sunscreen. I'm hoping to get the Biore UV 50 when I'm over there and stock up. So there's more of an everyday lighter water-like texture sunscreen rather than an oily feeling one that American ones have. I can repack. Y'all better be happy because I'm cleaning up this mess for you guys. <laughs> 
Another thing I'm bringing in my everyday essentials is the Row SPF 50 mineral powder. The brush is like this and retracts, which is super cool. And it's a mineral powder. This is not supposed to be my main base sunscreen on my face. I'm actually using this in tandem with the face sunscreen and body sunscreen. So this is the base layer and this will just be a nice matte finish on top, which is because I really hate the greasy feeling. I don't want my face looking not like a disco ball. I'm bringing these brushes, or I hate getting my hands dirty, to apply my sunscreen on my face. This is actually for my body, this here. So I, I will be using these ones for my face. I also am bringing my card holder and cash. I made a video about this on my channel. Coin purse. I'm bringing along a hand towel as well because I heard that in Japan, people do not have hand towels that that you can use in the bathroom. And to make sure that it doesn't wet my bag, I also brought along a silicone reusable baggie. The towel in when I'm done using it. Canvas tote. I got this one for free. I am also bringing along a clip a clip, which I normally use for my designer handbags. Magnetic eyeliner. This is from the brand Doe, but I put this in a different container because this one is the only one I used to have uh, from another brand, but I just kept the box, popped the Doe eyelashes into this box. And I like it because I can put this in here and I just glued the style and the name of the brand from the original packaging onto here just so I could remember what name it was in case I wanted to buy more of these eyelashes in the future because I really love these. They're like made from silk fiber and they can last up to 60 wears and they're Korean brand. It looks kind of like a hot mess right now. Bear with me, please. Phone wristband. And I like it because it's like this silicone squishy material and this is how it attaches to my phone is via here, but it keeps my phone secure and then I can just have it on my wrist throughout the day because I figure going to Japan there's going to be a lot of navigation. I kind of don't want to have to pull my phone in and out from behind my back because that's the one con about a backpack compared to a crossbody. Things are less easily accessible. You have to swing everything to the front because I heard that in Japan you can get stamps at train stations and at various stores and places for free. I got this notebook specifically for this trip which I really love because it's like in the traditional binding style. I also also got this cute little pen clip to go with it and uh, once again I uh, really like to borrow some of my boyfriend's things because <laughs> all my pens are super fat so they don't fit. I'm gonna be putting like little stamps hopefully into these blank pages and I think it'll be a really cute memory and souvenir of Japan. The reason why this is so significant to me is because this is the third time I've tried to go to Japan. I've tried to go to Japan twice before and they both got cancelled. The plans have actually gotten set this time and they've actually are going through so I'm making sure it happens because it's been my dream to go to Japan. I was originally gonna go the first time when COVID hit and we were gonna go all over Japan for three weeks. I was going with a group of people for a class. The second time I was supposed to go to Japan was for a graduation. We were talking about it for one to two years that when I graduated my master's the way we would celebrate would be that we would go to Japan because my partner and I we both love Japan so, so much. I think there's just like a little bit of something for everyone in Japan. And that's something I feel is so magical about Japan. There's so much you can do there. And so therefore it got canceled because if you wanted to go to Japan, you had to like jump through some hoops, such as going with a tour guide and going in some groups with people. And we weren't about that. So as you can see, like it's been like disappointment after disappointment, not being able to go. So the fact that we really get to go this time, I really really went all out with the planning. That short itinerary is pretty crazy. I kind of don't want to show it because people are going to probably think I'm crazy. <laughs> this is why this Japan trip is so meaningful to me and I'm so excited about it. Earplugs, because my boyfriend snores. Hopefully he doesn't watch this video. Makeup remover. And I got this really cute container that I used refilled with my makeup remover. And the nice thing about this is that you can put like a piece of toilet paper or a cotton pad on here and it's pressed down and the liquid will come out the top here. It's like a spray bottle, but in a weird form function that works really well for cotton pads. I use a very basic facial cleanser. I don't have a very fancy skincare routine or anything like that. So I bought like a set of 
four pumps. This one is a spray for water or whatever. And these are all face wash, which I did not know before talking to my boyfriend. You can put as many liquids as you want in your checked bag. You only have a limit on your carry-on. I thought it was just a limit that applied to everything. Can you tell I don't travel much? Tiny little Dior sample perfume, perfect for traveling. I'm also gonna be bringing jewelry in this little traveling case. It's nice because it has a little mirror in it. In case you can't tell, I really love Pikachu. Pikachu counter, one, two, three. This is why I really want to go to the Pokemon centers and also the Pokemon cafe. I've been trying to get a reservation, but as you may know, it's gosh darn hard. So this is a Pikachu pin, Pikachu clip. These are actually bun makers. So I might decide to take these out. I'm not sure. Because I'm going to be there for about a month, I want to have like a versatile collection of jewelry that will go with any outfit. A sort of capsule jewelry collection, if you will. Little ear cuff, bringing along two rings. This one's a really cute one. I don't really wear necklaces much, but this one I thought would be worth bringing. This one has sentimental value to me because I made this myself. Um, my boyfriend and I went on a date. The company called Upstairs Circus, I believe, allows you to DIY projects. And we went on a date and did this and I did a gold bar necklace. I tried on both sides and I think one turned out worse than the other, which is why I did the other one. And then the other side I think turned out worse. And I brought these earrings along for something a little bit fancier while still remaining pretty neutral. And also I just just felt like this was very fitting. We're not going during Sakura season, but I thought the fans and the Sakura were pretty reminiscent of Japan. The next section, which is hair. I actually bought this traveling case for Japan and I was going to not bring the air wrap, debated with myself. And what if I need to blow dry my hair? I know. Okay, I know hotels have hair dryers. I can hear you guys yelling at me in the comments already. Don't yell at me. That's not nice. So I know that hotels have hair dryers, but I want to use the Dyson one just because it does actually have temperature sensing capabilities. So it won't go super hot. Unlike a normal hair dryer, a cheap one could. As a compromise for bringing this, I made sure to take out all the accessories that I don't think I would really use and only bring like the bare essentials, which includes my hair bonnet, my silk hair bonnet, which I made a video about. So if you're actually curious about that experiment that I did where I wore a silk bonnet for 14 days and tested if it worked or not, the video is on my channel. So I'll pop the thumbnail on the screen here. This is actually my leave-in conditioner and a heat protectant. I'm bringing the hair dryer attachment and also the smoothing attachment two in one. The round brush is a classic, so you gotta bring that. And also I'm bringing the curling barrel, even though I have short hair, the largest one, because if I'm lazy, I can just use that and it's hiding in here because maybe because it's shy but I got this wide tooth comb with this set I absolutely think this really improved my experience with the, the Dyson Okay, so now we're going to be going into toiletries. Couple tubes of toothpaste. Pick these up. Don't have to buy them. Just pick them up at the dentist. They give you little mini packs that are perfect for travel. Floss in a jar. And I don't even use the floss out of this jar straight. I use it with my Quip floss pick. So this one is a floss pick that is reusable. Comes with a little bit of floss. I don't really use it because this is plastic. And what's the point of having a reusable floss pick to be more sustainable if you're using plastic floss that you're going to throw away? So you press the button and it's spring loaded and it pops up. You can put your floss in there by threading it through these and then clamping it down to close it. And I used to use silk floss, but now I use bamboo floss because this is stronger than silk. My silk would break a lot more often than this. And they're pretty compact, I would say. This loofah in a plastic bag so that if I ever use it and it gets wet and I pack it again, it doesn't make my stuff smell mildewy. Mm, and it actually kind of smells good. I smell the soap on it. So I got these little wristbands. They're so that when you wash your face, you don't have that annoying issue of water running down to your ankles because this stops it at the wrist. I use them pretty much every day. I have two so that if one gets wet and hasn't dried yet, I can use the other one. This one is actually a hair Velcro thing I use to stick my bangs up so that my hair doesn't fall down when I'm washing my face is the section which I think is the most fun is the clothing and the capsule wardrobe. I mean, if you're on this channel, you probably like clothes. I did want to prepack a little bit because I didn't want you guys to be watching me con Marie every single piece of clothing because I'm sure that's a bit tedious and that's not what you're here for. Even though I only did bring 10 pieces total for my capsule wardrobe, I did bring some supporting items 
if you will. And I'm not gonna flash them at you because I have my underwear in my Sapporo hacking cube and also my underwear in my regular check bag. And these are compression cube, which I love because they have a zipper on the side here and they're mesh so you can kind of see through them, but also not clearly. If the TSA officers go through my bags, I don't want them to be seeing my underwear. You know, like the saying goes, you don't need to be airing your dirty underwear to people. My underwear isn't dirty, but huh. Here I have like rubber bands and another silicone Ziploc bag to put my dirty underwear so I can keep track of which ones are clean and which ones are dirty. The rubber bands are to tie around either my sock or vice versa. So this is the Sapporo cube. I can tell you I have PJs, I believe two shirts, one pair of shorts, one skirt, and this is not including the outfit I will be wearing on the day. Some sock, an extra bra, it's pretty much it, as well as underpants. Same thing with this, but on a larger scale. I'm not counting my silk cami that I'm bringing as part of the 10 pieces of the capsule wardrobe because I'm not gonna be wearing it as outerwear on its own. I'm gonna be wearing it underneath my t-shirts and other things as like a layering component. My first pair are gonna be the Hoka One One that we got when we were in Disneyland, Florida because we brought a pair of shoes and that just destroyed our feet. I'm only bringing two pairs for almost a month of travel. And I really wanna make sure I pack shoes that are really good for walking because I know that in Japan, we'll be walking eight and a half miles a day. We're actually going multiple places, which I will be making multiple vlogs about. So subscribe and stay tuned. So I have these pairs here and then the rest I stuffed inside my tennis shoes, which are the Adidas Superstars. The reason why I chose the Adidas Superstars is because they are super versatile with my dresses and my other shoes and they're super comfortable. Like, But the Hoka's are definitely the, the most comfortable, even though they're kind of ugly. I was so paranoid. I would forget these. I left them by the front door. And then I also stuffed the socks I will be wearing that day. We leave for our flight in there as well. But as you can see, they're not really fashionable. I have other shoes that are comfortable too, but they will not hold up to 12 hours of walking in them. My boyfriend and I in Florida, when we went to Disney World, we mapped out our feet, basically a 3D scan of our foot. It was determined that this would be like our best fit for our feet type and our arch type. <laughs> I have Chanel slingbacks, I have Amina Mawadis, I have cute unbranded sandals <laughs> that I could be wearing, but I choose these because they're comfortable. Some fun head accessories I'm also bringing along includes this hat. I got this in Disney World in the Epcot. This was Italy, so that's why it has limoncello and it says salut, which I think means hello or bye. It has little Mickey Mouse ears and the head in little lemons. And I have this stuck onto the end here. It's magnetic so that I can clip it onto my bag. I also have a Prada headband that I got as a gift. I'm hoping it'll match one of the dresses that I'm bringing. Now, before I talk a little bit more about the capsule wardrobe pieces, if you've made it this far in the video, this is the time where I'm gonna have to ask you to, I know it's cheesy, but like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. It would really mean a lot to this channel. My name is Mimi and on this channel, we typically do fashion and fashion history related content. If you're interested in that, as well as these upcoming travel videos, I will be making related to Japan then by all means subscribe. I'm hoping once we can get this channel to four digits oh, and I'm hoping to let my subscribers pick the next topic for our videos as my way of thanking the viewers. I would love to do bigger things with this channel but without your support I can only do so much. There was two of these bags. This is the clothing that I'm putting in the check bag and not bringing to Sapporo and this is the tiny portion that I'm bringing to Sapporo which only weighs about two or three pounds. So for the 10 pieces in my capsule wardrobe. I picked two dresses, four tops, and also four bottoms. Of those four bottoms being a pair of shorts, two skirts, and one pair of jeans. And if I wear them twice before I wash them, I can get 12 wears out of the clothes. If you're asking why I'm wearing my clothes twice before I wash them, it's because one, it's more economical. Two, because we don't waste more of our vacation looking for coin laundry places to do our laundry. And also three, because you don't need to wash your clothes after necessarily every wear unless you're sweating a ton, which it's possible that we will be sweating a ton and we will have to wear our clothes only once before we wash them, but I'm okay with just taking that chance and finding coin laundry. And also it helps keep 
my clothing to a minimum if I can wear them twice and then wash them or not because otherwise I feel like I would be overpacking and having to bring more clothes than necessary. And I picked a total of 10 capsule pieces for this trip and I thought a lot about what colors I want. I was kind of beating myself up to be honest because I didn't want to pick neutrals but at the same point I knew neutrals would be the easiest option for picking a capsule wardrobe that would be cohesive and easy easy to put together with other pieces. And I did make a video about how to do a neutral capsule wardrobe as well as how to do a colorful capsule wardrobe. So I knew I could have done a capsule wardrobe that was colorful, but I just chose not to, mainly because I have a limit as to how many colorful pieces I have. And most of my colorful pieces were like winter wear or not really made for summer. But I still wanted to add a little bit of color into my capsule wardrobe. What I did decide to do was add some color in through the dresses because I have colorful summer dresses. I think this is the best way to incorporate that compromise was to do more neutral shirts, pants, shorts, and skirts. And then also for a pop of color, I had two dresses, tailoring it down to a small capsule wardrobe while still having the flexibility of both neutral colors and also colorful colors allows me to have the best of both worlds. So for my two dresses, I picked a yellow gingham dress from Reformation that is made out of linen, which kind of a terrible choice, I know, but I wanted to wear a summery dress and I am aware that Japan can be a little bit conservative about that, which is why this outfit you see me wearing is actually the same pair of jeans and the shirt that I will be bringing along for my trip in a couple weeks from now. And I will be wearing this shirt underneath that dress. The second dress is a green Tallulah dress from House of CB which I've been lusting after this dress for a while and I didn't think it would be great, but I, I bought it. And I will definitely show footage and photos of me wearing it in my vlogs going into Japan, but it is stunning. And I thought I would have to crop it because I'm actually really short. If you're a shorty like me, you and I both know that we always have to hem our skirts and pants no matter what. But no, actually it looks very flattering on a short person. Of the four tops, one is this one. It's an Everlane organic 100% cotton tee. Top number two is my mock neck sleeveless cream knit. It's a very versatile top that I feel like can go with anything and it's also neutral. So for the dresses, I picked colors green and yellow, whereas for everything else, I tried to stay pretty neutral just to make it easier to mix and match everything. And top number three, I break this rule by picking a floral top, which doesn't necessarily go well with some other pieces like the Burberry skirt, but it's summer. I wanted to wear something summery for my vacation, so you know what? Sue me. Top number four is my lace-up gala top. I picked it because like, once again, it's a summer top and I don't think I could normally wear this kind of top to work. It's made out of linen, which is a very sustainable fiber because it actually is carbon neutral. It can be. It's from the brand Gala, which is this French brand that uses dead stock, which is fabric that has been produced but is no longer being created and it has no other use but to go to the landfill unless you repurpose it. My shorts are these white pair of shorts I got off of Depop with pocket. They were a little bit baggy so I took it in a little bit at the waist. The thing I'm using to take it in at the waist actually can also re-expand. It's not elastic and I can unclip it in case I eat too much sushi in Japan. That might be a reality that I may have to face and I've booked quite a few omakase places. The first skirt is a Burberry skirt which I got used from Vestier Collective. I talked about it in my sustainable haul video. My second skirt is this silk champagne slip that I got off of Quince. It's 100% silk. The only thing I do not like about it is the fact that it has elastic in the waist. And then my pair of jeans, which I'm wearing now, is the same pair of jeans, which I will be bringing as well. And that's part of my capsule wardrobe. These are cotton jeans. 100% cotton jeans that are kind of more of like a baggy mom jeans that have like a little fray at the bottom. The last category that I have is related to tech. 
I won't show it all. Miscellaneous includes more air tags and other sentimental items. I also put on here my backpack as well as extra space for souvenirs as an item to pack. I also actually have extra pouches left over for my packing cubes that I'm going to use to organize the souvenirs once I get there. And these are the extra bags. One thing you will notice that I'm not packing within my tech, even though I am packing my five terabyte hard drive, I won't be packing my laptop because I don't plan on working and editing while we're there. This is a trip and a vacation after all so I want to actually enjoy it and if you really want to support the channel and appreciate the content we're making then give this video a like and subscribe and you also want to subscribe because that's where I'll see you guys next is in Sapato. Bye! <laughs>